Hi, I'm Stan and I'm going to show you a weird trick. Now this isn't a magic trick, it's a philosophical trick that I like to call Schrodinger's cup. Take a simple coin, you take a cup, you put the coin in the cup, you shake it around and you slam it. You can see enough and you can hear to know that the coin didn't need fall, but you can't see exactly which way it fell. It's either heads or tails, right? Now here's the weird thing. Even though we know that it's fallen, it's one or the other, for sure. There's no other world, this is it. We still say that it's possibly heads and possibly tails. And we still talk about it in terms of probability, 50% probability. And this makes sense. This is not an illusory sense of possibility. This is what possibility is, where because we don't know, we have to be open to the uh, hypotheticals. If we were playing a gambling game where we flipped a coin and we were making decisions about how to bet based on the result of that coin. Flipping a coin in five seconds is equivalent to raising this cup in five seconds. It's the same thing. What this does is it actually makes things a lot more boring. What we're talking about here is epistemic modality. And what it means is that possibility and necessity are functions, not just of stuff, but of the scopes of knowledge that we have. So in our scope, it's possibly heads, possibly tails. If we were to import some omniscient thought experiment creator who somehow knows the thing in here, it would actually corrupt the sense of possibility and necessity that we're talking about because he'd bring in his own scope. And that's not what we would be talking about. So oftentimes you'll see uh, thought experiments doing that kind of thing and what this is, does is reminds us that you're not allowed to do that. Another thing that it does is in epistemic modality, by attaching scope qualifiers to each operator, it means that necessity in scope A is not the same thing as necessity in scope B, so you can't collapse them. This robs us of modal magic, which is good because it makes philosophy more boring and philosophy should be boring so that it doesn't accidentally grant wishes that our wishful thinking would have us uh, uh, seek. What it also means is that, you know, we don't need a bunch of possible futures floating out there in some ontological way, nor do we need some sort of multiverse. This is all we need to have a real possibility. Scope, epistemic scope.